Hey, it's Ubu, and today I'm talking about Silent Hill Ascension. Now that it's released, or has gone live, or however you want to say it, um, I've gathered my thoughts, I think, as best I can on what I think of it. Um, I had a video previously discussing what we should or could expect from it and how it works, and sort of my general thoughts on how it may be received. And seeing now how it's been received... I thought I would share my opinions on it, um, and I will say, unfortunately, it has not been well received at all whatsoever, and I think there's a lot of good reasons for that. Um, and at the same time, uh, this video that I'm making now isn't to dogpile the developers or the people that work at um, GenVid Interactive, or to like stress them out. Last night, I think it was when Episode 2 released, or however they call it, the most recent scene or whatever. It's kind of confusing the vernacular they use, but the guy, Jacob, that works at GenVid after the, like their post show, they were doing their post show, the recent episode. And he was like kind of going off about the monetization and sort of like their approach to this and um, trying to basically, I think almost overcorrect his passion for their project, which I totally understand and appreciate where they're coming from. Like their the reception they received probably really stressed him out. And um, he was obviously kind of upset about it because he just kind of kept going and going and going about um, just how he's just defending how they just decided to design their UI and, and it just their overall philosophy with this. Um, yeah, so I kind of felt bad for him, honestly. Um, so this isn't um, meant to, like, dogpile on him or any of those uh, people that work with him or have worked with them. Um, I just wanted to clarify that. This video is just to share my opinions on this, and I will maybe get a little spicy about it. Um, but I'm not going after anybody or trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm just trying to share my honest thoughts, because that's my philosophy with my channel, is I just tell it how it is and how I think about things. Um, so, yeah. I watched a few other creators share their opinions on this, and I will link their channels in the description below. They might have overlapping opinions with one another, but the sentiment is pretty much universal. I've been looking at a lot of the comments on Twitter and the recent posts, and um, yeah, a lot of people really don't like Silent Hill Ascension. And like I said, I think there is some valid reasoning for that. And the first thing that I think that set people off was how its monetization works. So the first thing you see when you open up the website, at least for me, I made my account. I like the day of, this is the Halloween night I'm talking about. I open it up, I get on the app on, I go on the website, ascension.com. And the first thing you see is the founders pack window pop up. It says pass holders receive the following benefits. Exclusive emoji sticker and frame. Founders status icon for profile name. Founders golden profile frame. Unlock the season pass. All puzzles, exclusive cosmetics, and more. Now, of course, when people have been waiting for 11 years for a Silent Hill game, when they open up your new interactive web series, um... And the first thing they see is a $20 Founders Pack for it. I, it kind of throws people off, in my opinion. Um, of course, we've been living in an age where it's very um, volatile discussion to talk about microtransactions. Um, and I would say, generally speaking, people don't like them. However, the Season Pass and the Founders Pack, everything for Silent Hill Ascension that you pay for in that aspect is only cosmetic. It is emojis um, and whatnot. However, I'll correct myself on that. While there is a lot of cosmetics with the stickers and emojis and all that, and as you can see here on the picture that I have up, um, they even, I guess they're trying to be meta, but they even have a sticker that says, it's trauma with like a bunch of odd colors on it. I guess trying to be funny, like making fun of the fact that you know, oh, Silent Hill is about trauma. Ha 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 ha. I don't know if that was the right approach, but I'm going to go into what the biggest flaw with the monetization is here in just a moment. But um, basically, when you start out, you make a profile and you have an avatar of sorts, which you can customize, either change their body type or their gear, which is just very basic clothes and accessories. 
at least for now, I assume. You can earn clothes and body features through the season pass. Now, the way this interactive series works is, is when they're playing the live stream and doing um, the event where you will vote on what choices are to be made, um, you use what is called influence points to vote. Now you can pull these up to a maximum of what you have on your account, or you can piece them out in sort of bunches like 200 or 500, stuff like that. Um, the thing is, and this is where the monetization sort of crumbles, um, is that with the season pass and also the store, you can buy influence points uh, just straight up, which then means you can influence voting or the polls more than people who aren't paying for them. Now, you can earn in-game it's not a game. I don't, everybody keeps calling it a game. It's literally not a game. Sorry, just going to get that out of the way. It's not a game. Okay, it has things that are akin to what a game should have. Like, some of the events have, like, quick time events and stuff in them. That doesn't make it a game, in my opinion. Because really what you're doing is just voting for stuff. However, I'll get more into really what uh, there is to do in a moment. So, if you open up the store... You can see that you can buy IP packs, influence points. So 6,000 influence points is 499, 12,600 is 999, 26,400 is 1999. And then the season pass is 1999, which has cosmetics, emojis, and also influence points you can earn from them. And the season pass has 100 tiers. Um, most of the cosmetics are, I guess, okay looking. They have you know, a bunch of stickers, like goofy things that are like designed around the monsters in the game and the characters and whatnot. Um, honestly, the profile uh, customization is super bare bones. So a lot of this cosmetic stuff really doesn't matter in my opinion, because it doesn't even look that great. However, let's say you're someone who doesn't want to pay for any of this. So you can earn daily and weekly, uh, you can complete daily and weekly goals and you can earn IP and XP. So let's say you had, I believe the experience is for the season pass. So if you had the season pass, the experience you're gaining through these events, uh, the, uh, the daily and weekly goals, you will be getting experience towards your season pass. So the goals include daily logins, watching the catch up videos, contributing IP to a decision and also earning IP. Weekly, weekly goals include collecting moments, or earning rewards and earning IP. Now the next way you can earn IP is through the Arcane Library, which is where you will solve puzzles to earn IP and experience. However, if you don't have the Season Pass, only one puzzle is available, unless you purchase the Season Pass. And then, there, which basically means that's more currency locked behind a paywall. Because if I'm only able to do one puzzle a day, up to a certain amount of IP and XP, but everyone can do all the puzzles if they pay $19.99, then they have more access to more IP than I do. I assume you can do every puzzle to the maximum amount of rewards every day. So you're not just you're not just locked to one puzzle. Like if I okay, I'm locked to one puzzle, but if you buy the season pass, you're able to do all like four or five puzzles. Uh, so that means you're also at an advantage by buying the season pass. That's even more of an advantage for you. So if you look at the arcane library, you'll see stones, Hashi, I'm not sure how you say that, code breaker, buried memories, and the lockbox. So I was able to do the lockbox uh, puzzle when I was looking at it. And it's a very basic puzzle where you move these dials to make the blades in the middle either like slam into each other or you make them completely go away. It's a very minimalistic puzzle. I don't think it's all that fascinating personally. So if you're looking at the main UI where your main homepage is, you will see all sorts of things. You'll see goals, store, arcane library, catch up, episodes, and at the bottom you'll see decisions. So the schedule window 
shows upcoming scenes with the option to catch up with previous scenes and to view all of the current episodes. You can earn IP by catching up with previous scenes or episodes. So that's another way. So like if you're missing out and you want to come back and watch what you've missed, they actually give you IP for that, which I think is a good thing. That's pretty cool. Um, at the bottom of the screen shows available decisions. There are a total of three at a time, so it seems. When I last looked, there were three separate events that then you could put IP towards to vote for. And the thing is, is like, I don't understand when they, t how they time like the scenes and what happens in them to how long you can vote for, because the last time I was looking at it, the, the time to, for the vote would end or something was like three days or, which doesn't make sense. Cause I thought events happened like every day. So I'm not quite sure how the polling can be open for so long. Honestly, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, basically, I guess it's not that big a deal. You just go vote, and then once the timer runs out, it runs out. I guess you don't really have to think about that too much, but it, I guess it's still kind of confusing. So if you go, you're go, you at the bottom and you click on the bar, you can either cycle through the available choices, or you can click on a decision and see the progress it has towards one of the three fates. So you'll see when you click on the decisions and you see the three uh, areas where you can uh, put your IP to vote. Um, you'll notice that um, above that, there will be the character or whatever the decision is, and it'll show three little symbols, one being a bird, one's like a heart, like a broken heart, and there's a skull. The bird represents redemption, the heart represents suffering, and the skull represents damnation. And depending on which of these choices are the winner, of the polls, or however you want to say them, um, that would be the result of that scene. Um, I guess that's fine, uh, and a lot of people assumed that it would only be damnation, it would only be bad choices, but it seems that people are actually going further towards redemption as of late. Uh, I haven't checked it as making of this video, I haven't checked anything on it on the website today. Um, uh, honestly, I'm not that interested. So I know this video is kind of all over the place. Uh, I'm trying my best here. I'm not um, 100% <laughs> um, savvy on making videos like this, but I am I am trying. Um, I wanted to break down sort of the homepage like I did. Um, another thing I haven't talked about is your profile. So if you click on your profile, you'll see uh, your character that you have. <laughs> and the customization here and the the fidelity of the character and everything is super bare bones in my opinion, but I guess having this profile isn't necessarily the whole point. However, with the season pass and everything being um, mostly focused on giving you cosmetics for your profile, um, uh, I find it to be kind of kind of lacking in my opinion. So you can click on gear and you'll be able to look at like, of course, you know, your hair, your facial hair, accessories, shirt, jacket, bottoms. They're all pretty simple. I was messing around with my guy here. I got glasses on him, you know, and a jacket, you know, whatever. I, I don't, I'm just not that interested in that. I, I guess it's okay looking. I mean, if you go to customize body, you can change your body type one or two. You have your face and your skin color you can change, which I guess is all right. <laughs> Um, super bare bones though. There's almost nothing to really pick through unless you're like already unlocking things in the season pass. I'm sure they'll update that and, um, expand on that at some point. Um, I think one of the main reasons why I would say they could probably have done better on the customization of your profile is because I noticed something called the cameo contest, um, which is so strange. There's so many things a part of this whole event that it's like racking my brain <laughs> trying to keep up with it all. So you have cameo contest, which is a cameo contest offer a chance to have your avatar immortalized as a character in the story. The more tickets you purchase, the higher chance you have of winning. You have starring roles, guest starring, and extra. So starring roles are speaking roles that span multiple scenes. Guest starring roles are one-off speaking roles, and extra roles are non-speaking background roles. So it's like, oh, that's my character. 
And as you can see here, you can get more tickets by just spending IP on them. So if you're a whale and you really want your basic avatar to be in one of the scenes in some manner of speaking, you can just go buy a million tickets, I guess. Not literally a million, but a buttload of tickets. And you can be like, wow, look, my character's in the background of that one scene. Whoa, cool, huh? Yeah, that's, that's weird. I, I mean, I don't... And I'm not trying to be negative or downer about this. I, I found myself wanting to be a lot more interested in this. I had done a lot of research on really what we should expect or what we were going to expect. But I guess my mind kind of wandered and thought it was going to be a, a bit more linear than this. But there are a lot of systems in place here that seem to be attached to monetization. Because it's like creating an incentive to say, well, hey, you want to be in the scene that everyone that's watching will see? They'll literally see your, your character, even though, honestly, they're not really unique enough to really stand out. But that incentive is what's going to drive people to be like, I'm going to buy a bunch of tickets so my character can be in there. I, I guess it's like whatever. So that's a very odd system as well, which is, I think, attributed to the customization. Because if your character is super unique looking in the background of one of the scenes, then you'll obviously notice it, um, which is... All right. Um, yeah, so we're going to look at the season pass a little bit. I have some screenshots. Uh, this is the first few that you can get. And you can see I already have some experience towards it uh, just by doing daily goals and stuff. I haven't spent a penny on this, and I will not spend a penny on this at all whatsoever. I'm not into that. So you have, like, the first thing you get is white high curls. Whoa. And then you can get the colorful glass, which is the square around your avatar's picture back on the profile screen. And see, just on rank 3, you get 4,000 IP. And then you get a new face, which the faces are very basic. It's bread, which is a meme from Silent Hill 3. I like little kind of cheeky things like that. They're like, that's kind of funny. I think the It's Trauma one has set a lot of people off, which is like, whatever. I think I don't mind them trying to have sort of a sense of humor when it comes to this because clearly it's not anywhere near as as scary or dreadful or anything as we might have assumed because when you hear Silent Hill you like if you're familiar with Silent Hill and you hear the words Silent Hill you autom you automatically have an envisioned sort of atmosphere and feeling and and tone that you think of and this obviously has its own very unique tone because it's like being, you know, self-aware with the uh, with the joke sort of stickers and which is whatever, you know. So then if you go one more, I went all the way to the very end. And, you know, there's another face. There's a knit sweater, more IP, coffee break, which I guess is like the meme where... The little dog is like, it's fine, or whatever, I assume. And the fire monster that's sitting there, I think, is one of the entities you'll see throughout the event, um, I guess, later down the road. And then you got gold frame glasses, uh, tombstone for around your profile picture. And then 500 IP, which I think just repeats every time you level, because it's 101, and it's got like this odd symbol it looks like a circular arrow. I think that means like maybe once you max it out and you continue to level it up, you'll get just a 500 IP like indefinitely, I guess, until they add a new season pass. I guess that's my assumption, at least. Uh, I'll show you the catch up screen. This is where you can catch up with current events. Uh, you can see the end of joy was the opening uh, event, I think. And then blessing of curse. I, I guess all of these happened on Halloween night. Yeah, and you can see the IP symbol on each of the windows. Um, they're grayed out because I quickly watched them. Honestly, I think you only need, just need to click on them. You don't even need to really watch them all the way through. So yeah, that's cool. If you want to catch up, you actually get IP for it. One thing I forgot to say is when you spend influence points on your polls, you have this thing that counts upwards uh, as a dial here. Um, C600 to 1500 spent. And then you get a reward. And when I got one that, when it finally worked, because I spent enough to get it like three times, because every time I would get it, 
and I would go click on the box on the main screen, it, it like wouldn't give me anything. And I don't know if it was just giving me more IP. It was being very buggy, which I understand on the launch day that it was like a lot for them to handle on a technical level. Yeah, but I opened one of these finally, and the only one that I have opened gave me like a brown ponytail customization. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll show you how the poll looks for one of the events that happened. Um, it's a lot to look at. Um, so you have at the top where it says active. So this is an active poll that you can vote on. And on the right side says context. This is the context of the scene at the foundation. Rachel was leading Joy's ascension ritual when something went terribly awry. Terrified, Joy begged Rachel to tell her what to do to stop the horror. What should Rachel tell Joy to do? So what you're voting on is what should Rachel tell Joy to do? All right. And in the center of the screen, you'll see that question. And then Rachel's current fate um, and then the three symbols, which is redemption, suffering, and damnation. I honestly am not sure what the gold and fate means in the top left. So if you look at the voting polls here on the left where it says finish the oath at 49%, that is your redemption choice. In the middle is the suffering choice. And the right one is the damnation choice. So you'll see IP 18.9 million has been uh, added towards that vote, 13.1 million added to the middle vote, and 6.4 million added to the right vote. Um, there are at some point like rallying cries. You see rally in the top right there. You can click rally on a vote that you want to happen. And when people, um, I believe when they put IP towards the rallied choice, it's like a multiplier for your influence points. I guess it's some sort of meta game where you can just be like, hey, vote for this one, and everyone votes for that one. And then, but hell, man, when you're ahead like by 5 million IP, I, I'm not sure what any multiplier is going to do for that. And then when you see under each of the votes that say IP 200, you can click on that to just put 200 towards it. Or the little drop down to the right of that where it says IP with a plus. You can click that and it'll show a little window where you can max out as much IP as you have, throw all of your IP at one vote, or you can piece it out in certain numerical uh, totals. Um, and then if you're on the main menu, or if you're at where I just was, uh, where underneath what will Rachel do, what will Rachel tell Joy to do, if you see where it says Rachel's current fate right under that, there's a little box with an eye in it. If you click that eye, it will bring you to that character's little sheet, Rachel Hernandez. It'll show her hope and her fate. Um, and then it'll have a description of the character. And then the boxes below with the character portraits are all the other characters you can click on and learn about and see where their hope and fate are sitting at at the moment. Yeah. Well, I think I... Hopefully covered everything, maybe in not the most um, <laughs> palatable order, but overall, I would say the the overall design of this is honestly not that interesting to me. I, I couldn't even find myself really sitting there and watching the story unfold because another thing that's someone else pointed out, I don't remember who it was, but um, maybe one of the YouTubers that I'll um, leave the description to in the uh, description box below, the link to, excuse me, um, is that I don't think technically any of the story is even happening in Silent Hill. It's like one of the stories is in America, which Silent Hill technically is in America, but it's about a cult called the Foundation or something. And then and there's another story taking place in Norway. But they're never, I don't think, specifically ever in Silent Hill. At least not yet. Maybe they will travel there at some point. It's almost as though they're using si the concept of Silent Hill being like where the characters are is their Silent Hill. You know what I mean? Like that philosophical way of doing it or whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that overall presentation of this is not that great. I don't think the story is that interesting. I think some of the acting is okay in it from what I watched. Um, 
overall, I, I don't really think it's all that fascinating to me. Now, if you do enjoy this and you're enjoying it and you're having a good time with it and you like it and you have no problem with it, I that's totally fine. I'm not bashing you. I don't like going after people who like what they like. I'm just saying my, this is used for just my thoughts on this. And what I ex I didn't expect this to be like the holy grail of Silent Hill content either. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, I just don't like its presentation. I don't like the monetization, um, which, of course, it's like, well, you don't have to buy it. And, well, the entire structure is basically designed to incentivize you to buy all of this um, useless stuff. Because I think it's basically borderline useless. I expected it to be a lot more of a linear experience where when we're watching something, um, the voting isn't as structured on having all of these, like, this in-game currency, which is not a game. Um, but this currency, the influence points currency, I think is what threw out of whack for me. I just expected there to be choices throughout an event that we would watch and just make it really simplistic and a lot more immersive that way. Um, like I said, there are like quick time events and things in certain situations where you can, inter you are technically interacting with the event. Like you're dragging arrows in one direction to make him like a character dodge out of the way, or you're like clicking something really, really fast, or you're like, waiting for a bar to fill up and you click it at the right time to stop it. Very like mobile game-esque type mini games, in my opinion. Um, and especially it being a live stream, they're not very accurate, I think. I think sometimes events have failed, even though people are doing the uh, the quick time events and the interactivity um, very well. It'll just be like, nope, you messed up too much. Uh, the character is hurt now or whatever. I don't think it's a reliable structure. I expected it to just be um, oh, kind of like how Until Dawn is in a sense where it's like, do you go left or do you hide or do you run or do you hide kind of thing? Do you stab them or do you forgive them or, but it's like, whoa, what should this person do? And then it's like three really weird choices that like they leave open for a really long time. I expected it to happen like almost in real time. Um, not exactly real time, but let's say a character's running down a hallway. There's something chasing them. They duck into a room and then a pole would pop up and then we're all watching and going, oh man, we got to do this to like save her, you know, or like, oh, I don't want to save her. She's a, a bad person. Let's make her jump back out and run across the hall or keep running or, but it's like this weird, like almost bidding system. And I don't, I don't like that at all i and that's on me i guess to have a certain expectation i'm not saying the game should have been i keep calling it a game it's not a damn game <laughs> um it's on me to have this particular vision of mine of what it was going to be and it not being that as sort of where some of my frustration is coming from which is understandable um we all have our own expectations for things but like i say in a lot of my videos i try not to have unrealistic expectations I thought it would have been a lot more enjoyable the way I was describing it because it had been a lot more simple and easy to take in and just something us to like for us to do and interact with something Silent Hill related while we wait probably another year for any news on the other games. Um, but they made it all about a currency and a store and a season pass and I don't know, man. I just, I really don't enjoy the structure of it whatsoever. I, I really think they could have done a lot better with it. Like, I think the idea of the interactive series and having us vote on something as we watch it, I think could have worked. Um, I would have much more enjoyed it if it was just a very simple system. I don't like the currency system. Um, one of the creators I watched had a good point um, and what they were talking about. It was Bach de Soup, I think, if I'm saying that correctly. He's, uh, he seems pretty cool. I'm not really familiar with his content, but I was searching around YouTube for people's opinions on this to see what they had to say. And he had mixed opinions on it as well. He, he didn't really like it all that much. But one thing he did mention is that as a streamer himself, it kind of works out for him because he can watch it every day and his chat can interact with him and tell you know him i guess what to do or 
it's sort of like a watch party. If you're a streamer and you have viewers that are with you um, watching the event, you can all kind of have fun together, make fun of it, you know, have a little experience. I'm glad you can have make some fun out of it that way. You know, I think it was cool that he pointed that out, that there is some fun to be had of it, but it almost seems to target a streamer in a sense of it might be more enjoyable for them because they're interacting with the streamer they usually watch anyways. Um, and then it's just kind of a fun thing they all get together and do. Um, but if you're just sort of like a solo viewer like myself, I feel like I'm just sort of there and my, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, people are going to buy influence points. So I don't really care that much anymore. Um, and like I said, you can earn influence points just by logging in and clicking on puzzles or whatever and watching. But, um, I don't think the loop, like there's nothing to really hook me to stay into this for, for every day for for six months i remember in the post um show in the last episode jacob said something about eight months and everybody was like what I, maybe he misspoke because he was kind of fired up about the reception it was getting which i totally understand must be a lot of pressure on them to try to do this um they've been working on it for a long time um genvid interactive that is um so i don't want to like you know, the intent of my video isn't, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the intent of my video is, like I've already said, not to be like, oh, these people are idiots for doing this. I'm not, I'm not saying anything like that. I think their intentions were um, good, but I, however, think their execution or whoever was maybe in charge of sort of the design of it, the main hook being a currency, I think was a terrible idea. I'm also... One of my biggest points I forgot to mention, I am shocked that they have a live chat open while this is going on. That is like absolutely insane to me. Like <laughs> there's already been a lot of messed up stuff said on there. And he mentioned himself, they, they're using like an AI uh, moderation system of some kind. Uh, there might have real people also on board with that, but there is some sort of I AI filtering they're using for their chat, which obviously isn't working the best of its ability. Like looking here on the main menu, you'll see on the bottom right-ish next to episodes, there's like a little chat arrow box. That's what you can click to open up the live chat. And even when nothing's going on, you can sit on the home screen and there'll be people in there talking sometimes, which is kind of cool. You can like check in on the page and see who what people are up to and talk to them about Silent Hill or whatever, but I don't know. I, I just, I wish there was a better way to describe my thoughts on this other than I think it's just kind of disappointing to me. I, I don't think it's great. I like, I like the intention they had. Like I liked uh, the, the structure had potential. And in my opinion, I don't think it is a great start to the Silent Hill revival at all whatsoever. Um, I think it does get it out there and gets people talking about it. But of course, like nobody likes this. Now, I'm sure there are people who do. And that's fine. But I've, like I've said, looked at so many comments on Twitter and stuff. And almost like 95% of them are like, they hate it and they're really pissed off about it. I'm not on here to like freak out and get angry. I'm, I'm a little, I was a little uh, spicy about it um, the other day when I saw all of this, um, to be honest with you. I just, I can't believe you would slap the Silent Hill name on this, honestly. I don't think it needs the Silent Hill name. I don't see how it necessarily is Silent Hill, and I'm okay with Silent Hill trying different things. Don't get me wrong. But there's something really off about it that just seems very, um, it's like a prototype of some kind for something else. And they were like, hey, we can do Silent Hill. That'd be kind of cool. And then they were like, okay, yeah, go for it. And then monetize the freaking crap out of it. And yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to see how long this will go on for. Obviously, they're going to, I guess, go all the way through with their plans. I'm curious to see how they'll update it and try to change it a little bit to, um, sort of appease the feedback they're getting. Honestly, at this point, though, the way they started, I don't see anybody getting hap being happy about this. Like, I don't think you could change it all that much. And to get people back on board, I, I really don't. Um, I see people just kind of turning this off and not coming back to it. Maybe a couple months from now, they might check on it and see how it is. Like, I might do that. 
I don't see myself um, looking more into this anytime soon. Maybe every once in a while I'll check on it and see how it goes. And I don't know, maybe a month or two from now I'll give you an update on how it looks. Because, um, yeah, I guess that's just the best way to put it is I'm just sort of disappointed. And it's unfortunate. Um, I wanted I wanted this to do really well and a lot of people just don't like it, which I totally understand. Um, and I'm not saying to go out of your way to um, harass or bother anyone who does like this or the developers of this. Do not bother them. Do not insult them or say terrible things to them. There's literally no reason for that. If you don't like something like this, my philosophy is if with anything, if you don't like it, just don't interact with it and just stay away from it. Like it's, it's just not made for us if we don't like something. And it's like, okay, fine. I don't have to, I don't have to do any more, put any more of my energy towards it. Um, and make a big fuss about it. There's really there's really no reason to be that way about things, in my opinion. Even if you're really passionate. You know, I'm passionate about Silent Hill, even though I've only played a few of the games. Um, I'm still a huge fan of the series and just the overall um, sort of history of the franchise is very fascinating to me. And seeing this is obviously frustrating, but I would just say do not go bother anybody about it. Now, you could share your opinion in a constructive and polite way as best you can. Um, that's totally fine, but I've seen a lot of uh, pretty mean comments, uh, just kind of being like, you know, f you and all this stuff, and towards the towards the developers' Twitter and stuff. Um, yeah, I guess that's expected, but just take it easy out there is all I'm saying. If you if you don't mind, <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's all I really have to say about it. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. What do you think? Um, is this a big disappointment to you as well? Um, is there some sort of um, grass is greener on the other side sort of perspective that you have? I'd like to hear all of your perspectives, um, no matter what they are. Um, just kind of take it easy on each other in the comments. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, if you enjoy my content and things like this, I don't usually do videos like this. I'm working more into doing these every once in a while, especially when it comes to games that I'm very interested in or things related to a franchise that I'm very interested in, like Silent Hill. Um, yeah, um, subscribe and like, comment and share and do all that fun stuff if you enjoy what you heard today. And go check out my other videos and um, whatnot. I have some playlists of you know horror games and stuff like that. And my um, philosophy of my channel is just to play games, have fun. Um, everyone is welcome. I share my honest unfiltered thoughts as best I can. And then at the end of a video of a game that I complete or finish, I give it my final judgment. So that's what I do on here. It's kind of fun. So I guess I could give final Silent Hill Ascension a final judgment. I would say um, I wouldn't bother with it. And I, I just don't like it. I don't think it's worth putting any time and effort into, unfortunately. I mean, maybe a little bit. I, I guess you could just check it out and just watch the stories maybe every time they're finished. Like after a, apparently a week of every week, they have like a compiled episode. So maybe go back and watch it when they're like episodic rather than watching them in pieces and waiting for all the choices to be made. I don't know. That might be kind of fun just to see the full story and the accumulation of everyone's choices. Other than that, I, I don't care for it. I wouldn't recommend it personally. So that's my final judgment. I do not recommend Silent Hill Ascension. I think it needs work. Maybe a few months from now, it'll be better. The story will get a lot better. You never know. It might, might be really cool. But as of right now, no, I don't recommend it. So yeah, like I said, um, tell me what's up in the comments and everything about this. And um, if you subscribe and like and do all that fun stuff, I'd really appreciate it. And um, yeah. Uh, work on, as I do these videos, maybe a better way to structure them. I had a lot of things lined up today, and I think I sort of kind of got off topic, of, like off, <laughs> like my train of thought just kind of wandered <laughs> as I talked about some of this, so it might be a bit disjointed. Uh, so just uh, forgive me when it comes to maybe my rambling. <laughs> but I have fun making these videos. They're pretty cool. Yeah, and that's, I think, all I have to say about it. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.